walking along the street or you're at a party or else you're alone and then you suddenly dig you're looking in someone's eyes you suddenly realize that this could be the start of something big Kay Ballard is a name I knew mostly from her work in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Game shows. Lots and lots of game shows. And we know how I feel about those. Also, being a supporter of any and all things Eve Arden, I've checked out more than a few episodes of The Mothers-in-Law, the two-season sitcom The Women Top Lined in 1967. However, that's essentially where my knowledge ended, shrouding Kay Ballard in a bit of a shag-carpeted haze for me. This week, I had the opportunity to catch an early look at the upcoming documentary, Kay Ballard. The show goes on. Do you hear that? That's Kay Ballard. I don't care. Well, she made more people famous than you can imagine. Bad Kay. She says it, and she delivers it right to your face. Uh, she's original. She's not like anybody else. Later. Later we'll talk. She can do everything, you know? We'll have coffee. We'll talk. She is magic. Now, let's get real here. She's a character. Well, she was good in anything she had to do. She's a protean talent, and she always was. Oh, really? The movie tells Ballard's story as an actress, singer, and comedian, beginning with her earliest work with band leader Spike Jones in the 1940s, to her last shows before her passing in 2019, as well as all of her journeys in between. It's right here where we have the inherent strength of this documentary. In research and execution, director Dan Wingate has crafted a full and rich examination of the full extent of Kay Ballard's layered career. This movie brings an effective melding of interviews and archive footage to tell the story of her more than 70 years in the industry. The interviews contained in this documentary are a veritable who's who of a number of the surviving or recently deceased superstars of television and stage from the middle of the 20th century. The names and faces of the interviewees bring plenty of people together who watchers of this channel are sure to enjoy. Anne Margaret, Carol Channing, Peter Marshall, Michael Feinstein, and often Ballard herself, to name a few. The use of archival footage throughout this documentary pulls double duty by not only telling Ballard's story visually, but also building the world around it. Through this footage, we're granted entrance into a world that few people remember. This is particularly true in that a lot of the footage isn't the easiest to find at this point in history. We don't see this on YouTube. And as I've mentioned before, the variety shows and the late night shows of the middle of the 20th century are some of the best historical documents we can find. This is a true look into the culture of the period. Series like Perry Como's Craft Musical, The Mel Torme Show, and The Gary Moore Show aren't series that are captured in modern syndication. However, the clips that we see in these shows and on this documentary are a window into the songs that were being sung, the acts that were popular, and the vibrant personalities of the time in the most raw situation they could find themselves in, live television. was a teeny tiny lady just as tiny as a girl could ever get oh and she was so very lonely in her teeny tiny house with just an itsy bitsy television set However, in each of these clips, Kay Ballard absolutely shines, showing herself to be a true encapsulation of a triple threat. She could act, she had a dynamic singing voice that I didn't know about, and she was a comedian. As the documentary mentions, this is some of the only documentation we have of her work that she was doing on stage nightly. And there's a wide-eyed sense of joy and nostalgia captured in this documentary that I loved. In fact, it's so fresh, and there's very little in the line of hostility or drama in this show business story. With the exception of one particular person, every time Kay Ballard speaks about someone, and in turn everyone about her, there's a real sense of admiration and respect. This goes hand in hand with the fact that this documentary really uses the positivity to build a sense of community within the early television crowd of the time. It's easy to get lost in the sheer scope of what the medium and what the industry would become, 
But this in Wingate's hand shows the very real human bonds between these performers. There's no animosity. There's no sense of drama. Whether the interview was with Jerry Stiller, Carol Channing, or Anne Margaret, there's a respect and an acknowledgement of their talents and their abilities. It's easy to see and appreciate how these professionals have formed bonds on the way up and the respects that they built when they were coming up in the industry. Suddenly, the world of early television in New York feels that much smaller and really that much more human. When I was sitting down to watch Kay Ballard, The Show Goes On, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Fans of Kay Ballard, and really fans of the golden age of television and entertainment, should find plenty to enjoy with this nostalgic gem of a documentary. I found myself feeling at home as I watched and found still so much to learn and appreciate with Kay Ballard's lengthy and versatile career. Kay Ballard, The Show Goes On, is set for a virtual premiere July 14th, followed by a streaming release on July 17th. Feel free to visit kayballardmovie.com. Stay tuned for more here at Female Gaze Productions as we look at classic popular culture through a historical and feminist lens. My name is Kim. You can find me on Twitter at kpierce624. And if you're looking for more, please check out my podcast, Hollywood and Wine, wherever you listen to podcasts. As always, if you like what you're seeing, please like and subscribe. Thanks, guys.